Hello everyone, this is Zook and this is my continuation of the no bullshit approach to drawing. Today I'm going to be addressing ears. Uh, ears, I've always found to be quite easy to draw because, well, most of the time you don't get to draw something directly from the side view. By the way, these uh, scars on my hand, that's my cat's work. Awesome stuff. Uh, so it's either frontal or a bit to the side. So therefore ears is not something that you, or not something that I had a lot of issues with. Uh, first of all, I guess I should draw a human ear, even though you get to see it on a daily basis. When it comes down to drawing it, uh, you suddenly forget most of the time. At least that's what happened to me. It's like, oh yeah, ears, I know what they look like. But then when you have to replicate the exact shapes, then it, it suddenly turns into a problem. So, basic human ear is goes kind of like this. And it's all about muscle memory. Like, I, I drew this so many times that I just remember everything now so this is the basic shape i guess uh, of course the lobe it differs from person to person it can be a very uh, obtuse uh, circle or even more than that or very sharp i've seen a lot of shapes for your lobes it differs from person to person as i said uh, but this is like all in all the basic so um that little curve that goes around so starts somewhere around halfway through, like, let's say here, I guess. It just goes like that. And this fades, actually. This fades away, right? It's not a continuous line all the way down, as I've seen people draw it. It 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 gets lost also around halfway. So this is just a simple sphere here, really. Um, then over here, there's another line that defines the uh, start of the curvature. This is the kind of the lobe thingy that you see. And somewhere around here starts the other side of uh, the ear geometry, so to say. And it's kind of like that. And of course here you got various shapes for, you know, this and that. This is where the eardrum is. Kind of here. Of course, this not might might not be like anatomically correct one hundred percent, but um, I can just draw this again as many times until it does come out right. You know, it's no problem. Kind of like that, and like here, and now the lobe thingy, which goes kind of like that. And that's about it. See, kind of the same thing. This this is the line, of course. With when, when you do this, you you know when you shade, it gives it a, a totally different appearance, as you might imagine. Line work is never really quite as um, good at showing three dimensions as as shading is. This is another light gradient here, and this is like this is it for the human ear. Really, it's not not much more than that. Obviously, the lobe differs, but when I draw monster ears, uh, I tend to go with a, like a sort of an elvish, sharp shape sort of thing, mostly because it just fits um, fits most creatures, and it does give it a sense of you know monstrous nature. I I would say uh, something that's not very natural, something that doesn't belong in this world. Uh, ears, of course, can contribute a lot to expression. Um, or floppy ears like you would see on a basset hound don't do much to portray ferociousness but this is more like a cat ear i guess and cats you know they're associated with uh, um, they're predators they you know they stalk their prey they hunt etc etc so sort of a cat ear shape works in this case so the eardrum is going to be somewhere here i guess uh, i'm just going to give it a light layer first the first primer and then I'll work on detailing it from there. I'm probably not going to draw the second one because it's pretty much identical to the first one. So I'm just going to do the first and draw the second one off camera. It just makes more sense that way. Trying not to mix the uh, the ear shape with the, uh, the cheekbone here. Just keep it separate. It's always good. So obviously a different, uh, a different shade of gray, if you will. This does look a lot like a gremlin now, I gotta say, and probably was kind of going for it because, well, maybe it's not the exact same shape of the ear, but 
uh, that doesn't really matter. A lot of the mistakes I see people doing when they send me drawings, because unfortunately sometimes they do. No, I'm kidding. People can send me stuff. Just don't don't always re expect a reply, because I don't reply to everyone. Um, is making this part too thin. So this part is basically what defines the the shape of the ear. If, the, if it's all flat, then it doesn't look natural. If it's flat, you you know it it doesn't have the rigidity to actually hold up its shape. So this part here has to have some weight to it or some thickness to it, just so it it shows that indeed this ear uh, comes in a sort of a a concave shape or or bends around, you know, like. A, a regular ear does in a cat or a dog or whatever. So this, I'm doing the core shadow of the upper side now. Doing, uh, trying to shade in the, the, the darker tones to, to show that um, this part is further back because the ear bends, as I've said. So just doing a little bit of work to separated from the frontal plane god this paper has been through so much like i spilled shit on it it's crazy dirty it doesn't matter though as long as it holds up and i don't do anything too bad to it it should be fine so again extending the core shadow a lot as you can see like i i, I talk about the core shadow in basically every video it's truly, truly one of the most important things when you want to define a shape. Um, it has to have a core shadow to show volume. If it doesn't, then it just looks, doesn't look good. Unless we're talking about a completely square shape, it doesn't really have a core shadow. But everything that's spherical or round will have a core shadow, pretty much. And if you're new to my videos, a core shadow is basically the darkest point in a sphere uh, think of a you know a light from a lamp hitting a just a random ball that you might have in your desk for some reason. Well, the core shadow is. I'm not gonna draw this again. You can find videos about core shadows all over YouTube if you really care. If you don't, then tough shit. What can I say? So just fading away the gradient here. It is clear now that the ear does bend around the head and there is a, a shape there holding it up. It's trying to detail it a bit. Um, I guess I should make sort of a lobish thing here. Lobish. Coming up with new words for this shit. That's fine. So this will be the eardrum. And this has to fade away. Separating the eyebrow, which I'll do later on when I actually draw the eyebrow. Um, so this fades away into the the main body of the ear. Just gotta be careful with the gradient shades, of course. Uh, this will be the darkest point, obviously, because the light doesn't hit here. Fading this one away. This muscle fever I got from the gym isn't really helping much with this shit. It's a lot of hand movements and they hurt. Now, you can start thinking about details. What I like to add to ears is generally earrings or just a really torn up texture. So let's say, for example, he has an earring somewhere around here. Just lightly uh, lining it out. Something like that, probably. And now, of course, this one will need a core shadow, which will get lost halfway through, and the core shadow will continue basically on the bottom. You'll see when I'm done what I, what exactly I'm talking about. Like when you don't watch the video and you just listen to the stuff, a lot of it might seem confusing, but um, trying to put it into words as well as I can, because as I said, I don't. I don't draw via method, mostly draw by what feels uh, right. And of course, sometimes it fails. Most of the times it does succeed though, so that's why I keep doing it. There's a method in my madness. I'm not classically trained, if you can say that, so 
it's kind of what happens. You got to find your own reasoning and logic for stuff. And it might not make a lot of sense to other people a lot of times. I know when I've tried to do tutorials before, people were like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, I don't know, man. I'm just trying to, to say some shit, you know, just filling the gaps, whatever. Just watch the video and don't, it's all good. So that's kind of how it would be. Um, now I guess I can give it a more um, rough edge, really, kind of to show that it's been ripped. Let's see. This part needs to be straight. Something like that. Yeah, that works. Now I'm just darkening the whole thing all the way to the edge, but uh, I'm going to try and make some sort of pattern inside the ear so it's not just a flat plane in the back. You'll see what I mean in a second. Give it some ridges inside or something, just like uh, I showed you in the human ear drawing. So, but I do need to get my initial layer on just so I know if things look right or they need adjusting. And it can take a bit of time, which is uh, it's annoying, but it's part of the job, I guess. Should have picked a different pencil. This one is too, this one is a 2B. Let's see if I use a 4B. that works as well uh, dun, 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 dun. this is grunt work this is all grunt work here it's annoying but it has to be done okay and that's about it for the first layer now let's see this one needs a little bit of fading here it's the edge is too sharp Okay, now let's see a ridge would be this way. And the way I draw a ridge is basically just press down in a in a circular motion. And if I do need to add some highlights later on, then I can do that easier if I have the, the shadows down. But I'll not rip through the paper now. That would be kind of a shame at this point, I think. Okay, the camera can actually pick this shit up better than, than I can see it with my own eyes, which is kind of strange. I guess there's a different contrast there, which sort of works better. Of course, I have it upside down again, which is uh, probably why I'm not in the best position right now. Okay. Here it's going to be really dark because there's no light in the back of the head at this point. Fade it out. And this is the lobe thing. Need to define this a bit better, I think. Not getting, getting enough attention here. All right. Suppose I can give it a contour, make it a bit more cartoony. That's what it does. That's why I avoid giving um, my drawings a lot of contour because stuff just starts looking very, very drawn instead of more realistic as I'm trying to make it. But in some situations it works. It's not a bad thing necessarily. Just I hate drawing with contours when I'm doing something metallic, for example, because I try to get the, the shapes defined via just gradients. But um, when doing organic stuff, then it's not as big of a problem. Okay. That should be it. Now let's see. I guess I can do a bit of defining on the ridges here. <clears throat> just to show that they're, they're indeed uh, indented in, in the year 
So rubbing it lightly. Yes, I know. Rubbing it lightly with the uh, kneaded eraser between the, the dark areas. Like so. And now these shapes are not very rounded here, so I'm going to do a bit of refining. And by refining, I mean basically um, shading the left side of the, um, not the indentations, but the, not the grooves, what's the word for it? The, the convex shapes. Because I have to bring in uh, physics into this one. So the convex. And just doing a little bit of uh, coverage here. There's not much in terms of theory to say about the ears. I think this sort of came out well, actually. I wasn't expecting it to. Uh, but you can see that, you know, the, the edges is, is ripped up and ragged. And uh, maybe I should do a little bit of highlighting on the edges here just to show that it is... 3D, something like that. See, for me, drawing, this is why I can't really be so detailed in this stuff. Uh, it's something that progresses naturally, like it's it's not planned or anything. Uh, I was planning to add an earring, but I had no idea where and how it would look like, for example, so I just drew it wherever it seemed right. I make the worst teacher in the world. Can't teach anyone anything. It's like do this, take paper, draw. <laughs> That's probably would be the lesson I would give uh, my students if I were to teach art in um, in school. Take the paper, draw. Now, or you get an F. Get the fuck out. Happens. All right. <clears throat> so now, what finer details can we add to this? We can add some little bumps here. Some little. Um, uh, cuts as well, just like that. Stuff that, you know, embellishments. That's always something that I add towards the end, really, after I get my, my basic stuff down. Something like that, yeah. We can add some warts on the, the upper side of the ear here, like we did on the cheek. Apparently on this monster, all warts on the left side. Happens. What the fuck is wrong with this thing? There we go. Add a bumpy texture to the like a regular size um, bumps, really. To the upper side, just to give it, you know, some texture. Not everything has to be shiny and flat and nice, you know. Especially in nature, where stuff is very much uh, not flat and not uniform. It works to do so in art as well. If you're trying to emulate. Just drawing the core shadows of the bumps, like I did uh, mention in the the face drawing video, which was I, I think number three. Well, the last one basically was the the previous one was the face one. The reason I'm not going to draw the second year now is basically because well, we're at 18 minutes for one. Secondly, I have nothing else to say about fucking years. I think I've talked a bit too much about them in fact and thirdly well it might be a slightly more problematic considering it's on the left side and I'm a right-handed guy so you know might take a few tries and I don't want to <laughs> embarrass myself yes yeah, stuff stuff on the right side is always easier to draw it's it's just how it is so just drawing the shadow of the earring over the ear now and that should be about it for the year I think Of course, you can make like stuff like hair coming out of here or uh, more warts. You know, that always works. Just whatever you think uh, fits the situation. I don't think hair would be particularly fitting now since it's not a very, apparently not a very hairy monster. But uh, it can be done, most definitely. So this is going to be it for the year. Uh, as I said, there's like two or three videos left of the series where I cover the mouth 
um, and then the I guess head and that would be it like two I think I guess the head would include the the chin as well since it's kind of part of the head so I guess I'll do that so anyway that's it for the year hope you found it somewhat useful and again it's like with the human ear you can take those shapes and deconstruct it and apply it to your um, monster year as well or just look at animal years and, and on google images and you can see like plenty of examples that you can get inspired or just copy from simple so thank you for watching and i'll see you for my next videos have a good day bye bye